live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Locally, Tasmania's Palestine community is calling on the state government for a balanced response to the ongoing conflict after it lit the Tasman Bridge blue in support of Israel. The group says it condemns the Hamas attacks on civilians but also wants to see the Palestinian flag's colours displayed in recognition of the deaths which occurred in Gaza over the Let's weekend. recognise that the lives of Palestinian women, children and innocent people are equally paying the price for the horrific events that have happened. The state government says another organisation would have to give up its booking in order for the Palestine colours to be projected on the bridge. There's less than 48 hours until referendum day and both the yes and no camps are on a last ditch nationwide blitz and campaigners for both sides of the debate have turned down at pre-voting spaces across Tasmania as the referendum draws closer. Liberal Senators John O'Dunham and Claire Chandler taking to Kingston this morning warning voters of what they say are the risks of voting yes. And the fact of the matter is there are no details. That is the problem with this proposal. Not only is it permanent and once it's in the constitution it's there forever, uh, there are no details about exactly what this voice will be. Their criticism met with strong concerns about the future of Indigenous communities. Overcrowding in homes, dysfunctions in communities, there is a big risk. The risk is if we don't make change and we must make change in this country. The deadline to vote is this Saturday. Tasmania's police commissioner has admitted giving a former officer a police funeral was not the right decision. The officer, now deceased, is accused of child sex offences. To hold a funeral was wrong and I apologise to members of the community and police officers who attended that funeral without the full knowledge relating to Paul Reynolds. It was just the wrong decision. The Commissioner says changes have been made to the Tasmania Police Manual to ensure any outstanding prosecution or professional standards matters must be considered before a police funeral is decided. Regina Weiss has been appointed as the independent reviewer and no time frame has been set for the report's conclusion but it is expected to be released in full. Metro mechanics are continuing their fight for better wages, taking their petition to fund, fix and save Metro to the Glenorchy Bus Mall. The group calling on state leaders to take drastic action to stop mechanical workers from leaving the industry for higher paying positions. The public are sick and tired of having service cancellations, of not knowing when a bus is going to be there. And without enough mechanics, which there currently isn't, and nothing is being done to sort this problem out. Metro need to have a sustainable um, future, but I would hope that they can come to an agreement that, um, that both Metro and their workers are happy with going forward. The petition is set to be delivered to Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe and Transport Minister Michael Ferguson. For the first time in more than a decade, a new airline has touched down in Tasmania, but there is a catch. Passengers will still need to wait a few weeks before they can board, with Bonza busy training up ground crews. Purple and white landing in style. We're super excited that Bonza are going to be starting up. A typical Tasmanian welcome, but the gloomy weather can't rain on Bonza's parade. Its arrival shaking up the check-in hall, marking the end of a decade-long wait. It's a super exciting time for the airport, but also for Tasmania. This is the first time in 10 years that we've seen a new airline come to Tasmania. Today's touchdown comes without any passengers, instead giving Launceston ground crew a more intimate meet and greet with Bazaar. Customer service staff and our ramp staff. Um, they will get all of their practical endorsements, so they're all up and ready to go to receive our first passenger flight. Launceston Airport is bracing for an extra 29,000 seats once the wheels are officially up, opening the plane doors to the Gold Coast three times a week. It's really important. Um, the staff need to be comfortable and confident in what they're doing. It's a really good opportunity for all our local ground handling teams to be trained up on the aircraft. Well, I've had my pick of seats here today. In just a few weeks, this plane will be filled with passengers who will be welcomed on board with open arms. We'll be super excited on the 21st of November to welcome the first aircraft with passengers all the way from the Gold Coast. 
almost ready for takeoff. Here for Australia. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's salmon industry has taken its fight to preserve farming at Macquarie Harbour to the Federal Environment Minister during her visit to Devonport. The sector says injecting oxygen into the harbour could help save the Morgean skate from extinction, but activists say the plan doesn't stack up. It's a fine balance of protecting an endangered species and a multi-million dollar industry. Salmon Tasmania meeting with Federal Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek in Devonport to discuss the future of operations at Macquarie Harbour. With the rapidly declining Morgi and skate population, activists are calling for farming to be shut down. Um, you cannot take 400 jobs out of the northwest coast without it having a profound impact across so many families and so many communities right across the state. And the industry is super important to a lot of my friends up here and um, especially my family. Industry leaders remain adamant they're not to blame for the rapid decline, cautioning the minister to not be influenced by activists. But they are suggesting a solution. We need to work on improving oxygen levels in the harbour and that's effectively what the industry is stepping up to do through an oxygenation project. These, this technology, this engineering solution happens all over the world. It's a method the neighbours of fish farming say won't stop the slide in skate numbers. The industry tries to perpetrate the myth but there is an industrial way of resolving this problem that you use some form of engineering to oxygenate the water. Also claiming the industry is using the jobs figures as a weapon in its arguments while putting profits ahead of environmental protection. It's pushing to move salmon farming onshore, saying it would add more jobs to the economy and be more sustainable. It is the only possible outcome to keep the jobs in on the west coast and to maintain salmon production without destroying Macquarie Harbour and the Morgian Skate. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmania News. The state government is under pressure to create a detailed cost breakdown of the Macquarie Point Stadium before Parliament decides whether it's a project of state significance. It comes after the price of the Wesley Vale racetrack increased by $22 million. These big infrastructure projects are blowing out um, to a, a massive extent over the last couple of years. No one in Tasmania believes the Premier's uh, guesstimate that um, the stadium will cost just a bit over $700 million. The Rockcliffe government says more work will be done around the project's finances in Parliament next week, but is confident it can build the stadium within the existing funding envelope. A Tasmanian woman is recovering after being injected with venom while trying to save a platypus. She's hoping her painful experience will stand as a lesson to others as wildlife warriors urge animal lovers to leave it to the experts. What was meant to be a heroic moment for Jenny Forward quickly became a disaster. I just thought, oh no, it's a platypus, it might have been hit, it's on the road. I have to save it. She spotted the mammal just one minute from her Kingston home. Jenny managed to pick it up before it deployed its venomous spurs. She spent two days in the Royal Hobart Hospital needing surgery to her right arm. I was in the most excruciating pain I've ever been in, in my whole life. Thankfully, Bonnarong Wildlife Sanctuary was able to see the creature off safely. But say 50% of their platypus call-ups are unnecessary with the animal rarely needing human assistance. They do cross long tracts of land to get from one place to another. They use drainways as highways and people panic and think they're stuck. But it sparked an important message about how to handle or not handle our native wildlife. Male uh, platypus are really quite venomous, particularly uh, during the breeding season. Um, so really it's best to give them room. Aside from breeding season, platypuses are usually shy and timid mammals, but our waterways often lead them to human inhabited areas, where they then become more susceptible to the dangers of pollution and other animals. Jenny now using her experience to educate others. The dangers, you know, a lot of people want to help wildlife, but you've got to go about it the right way. Bonnarong urges people to call for advice or send a video of the animal rather than dealing with it yourself. And our advice is the way to handle it is don't handle it. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. 
Dozens of young girls have given cricket a whack at a school holiday colour blast. The Hobart Hurricanes on field to establish community rapport and inspire Tasmania's next generation of professional athletes. Glorifying cricket and girl power, the Hobart Hurricanes using school holidays to teach young Tasmanians about the game they know and love. I was your kind of typical cricket nuffy that just was, was bound to play cricket. I had two brothers growing up and we were just, we were the hardcore cricketers, um, but I would have loved to have headed along to something like this. The professionals putting a fun spin on the sport, incorporating coloured powder, water pistols and balloons. What are you most looking forward to? Getting splashed by like the colour bombs. The two day program, a chance to boost female participation in local cricket. I think we've seen an increase in young girls playing, especially now with the girls only clinics, um, starting from a young age to show that there is a pathway for them. The squad's eyes peeled for natural talent. Hopefully one of the younger ones that doesn't take my spot too soon. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, that's probably one skill that we're, we're lacking in Tassie. So hopefully I can try and kind of walk around and try and find the next uh, Next keeper. Do you want to be a professional cricket player when you grow up? Yeah. Mm, no. no. no? <laughs> we want to be Matilda players. The Hurricanes hoping Maddie and Zoe might have a different answer by the end of the clinic. Brianna Boylan, 7, Tasmania News. 150 years, it's a long time for any event and it's one the Launceston show is celebrating this year. Many age-old traditions are still on show, now mixed with a range of new attractions. Hold on to your seats, it's showtime. <laughs> it might be perfect weather for ducks, but grey skies wouldn't deter bumper crowds from making the trip out to Carrick. Out here, there's something for everyone. It's fine for me, never been here before, so this is very new to me. Is it a bit scary than it looks? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit fast. For 150 years, it's been a highlight of the local calendar. And after all that time, putting on a great show is a piece of cake. There's arts of all kinds. <laughs> made right before your eyes. Laser tag, pretty dogs, <laughs> fast dogs, even kids racing dogs. Uh, who do you think was quicker, you or the dog? <laughs> the dog. <laughs> You've been out of breath? Yeah. There's so much to see here at the show. I thought the best way to try and get my bearings would be to find a high vantage point, but maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Yeah! <laughs> who was screaming the loudest up there, you or me? Me. <laughs> But there is an even better way to see the sights and a lower adrenaline option. After all these years, some things never change and you'll still find all the show favourites like Dodgem Cars, Sideshow Alley, hey, well Dagwood Dogs and who could leave without a show bag? Uh, these are my son's favourites. He's got the Nerds, the Caramel and the Flake. He's going to have to try and hide the Nerds from his sister, I reckon, though. <laughs> the show runs until Saturday. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania has jumped on board the Albanese government's school student broadband initiative, offering disadvantaged families free internet connection for a year. The program, established to give students access to fast and reliable Wi-Fi to do their homework, bridging the digital divide in the process. Social housing providers, including Homes Tasmania, nominating their tenants as suitable applicants. It's always hard with a 10 year old, like everybody else has got it, you know, and he wanted it. We know how important connection to the internet is for students who are studying, um, but it's also about, it's also just about connection in general as well, um, making sure that kids are comfortable using the internet. More than 200 Tasmanians are already set up in the program. We're a little under an hour away from tip-off as the Jack Jumpers go for a third straight win. They've certainly captured attention after stifling league heavyweights Sydney and Melbourne last weekend. Now it's Illawarra's turn for the Tasmania treatment. One of six teams with a 2-1 and one record, a win tonight will see the Jackies jump to first on the ladder, pending of course the round's remaining games. Tasmania has dominated at the AFL Inclusion Carnival in Brisbane. The squad led at half-time 21-0 in its second round Division 1 game against Western Australia, eventually beating them by 49 points of the final siren. Tasmania keeping its momentum heading into the third round match against Victoria Metro, defeating them by 18 points. He's going to get the handball received back, and there it is, Tassie! They get the goal they needed. 
They now move on to tomorrow's Division 1 finals round. The WNCL comes to a halt next week as the women's big bash kicks off. Emma Maddox Jeeves swapping her Tigers stripes for Hurricanes purple, excitedly anticipating the arrivals of Hobart's two when imports. I, went to England, I played against Bryony Smith and she destroyed us. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to see her again and be on her team. They'll have a team dinner Monday to bond before their first match Friday, hosting the Scorchers. Good evening, Hobart recorded 20 degrees today, Launceston 16, Devonport and Burnie 17, 21 was the high at Friendly Beaches, St Helens 19, Bushy Park 18, Grove 17 and Flinders Island 16, King Island and Low Head atop of 15 and Strawn 14 degrees. Cloud with the front shifted east of the state today, low cloud moved over the west and swirled around the south. On the bigger picture, south eastern New South Wales and eastern Victoria found cloud containing thunderstorms, some cloud over the central coast of WA and the top end and a bit swirling over the bite as well. West to south westerly winds tomorrow caused by that cold front and low pressure zone moving off the east coast of uh, Tasmania, high pressure systems over the Great Australian Bight. Those west to south westerlies up to 30 knots but easing over the upper east coast of 15 knots swells to three and a half metres and we have a strong wind warning for all waters apart from the upper east coast and a warning to sheep graziers for the south east district for tonight and early tomorrow. The forecast for tomorrow, 16 for Hobart and a shower or two. Showers for Hewenville, 15 the high and 16 for Campania. Launceston, a top of 17 degrees, a cloudy day. A possible shower for Devonport, 17. Georgetown, 17 as well, 20% chance of a shower. 15 for Burnie with a shower or two. Showers for Strawn, 14 the top and 17 for Wynyard. St Helens, a high tomorrow of 18 degrees, a cloudy day. Swansea, 16. 16 for Port Arthur, but a shower into the mix. On Saturday, a few showers, leaving the east coast clear though. Small hail over the west and far south and snow to 600 metres. Showers extending statewide during the day on Sunday. Snow to 500 metres. And on Monday, showers mainly over the west and south. Partly cloudy over the north. Sunny and 31 in Perth tomorrow. Partly cloudy in Adelaide. A shower and 16 for Melbourne. 23 degrees and sunny in Sydney. 33 on the way for Brisbane. And top weather for Darwin, 35 the high. Drizzly over Hobart, 13, 15 in Launceston, 13 right now and partly cloudy in Devonport. Kim, it's good night from me. And it's good night from him and me as well. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Uh, yeah.